So you picked your new EFI system from Fitech. Now you gotta move on to fuel delivery. What do you choose? Today we're gonna go over on Tech Tuesday all of the Fitech fuel delivery systems and which one's gonna work best for your application. Fitech has expanded its line of fuel delivery systems, so when selecting your proper fuel delivery system with your application, you want to look at a few different things. Let's break down Fitech's fuel delivery into three major categories. We have our inline fuel delivery, which comes with a external fuel pump that would mount somewhere underneath the vehicle on a frame rail, on a bracket, hanging down low. We have our in-tank fuel pumps. We have these two smaller ones and our large fuel cell type ones as well. And then we have our surge tanks, um, the force fuel systems. These systems will rely on an existing fuel delivery system to pump fuel to them, and then they boost the pressure up. So when you go to select a fuel delivery system, you wanna look at a few things. I always approach it this way. Can I get an in-tank fuel pump? An in-tank fuel pump would be the number one option. The best way to go about that is to see if your vehicle has an EFI gas tank available. If you visit Fitech's website, fitechefi.com, you can search through our list of in-tank setups with complete gas tanks to see what's available. But also, if there's another company that has a complete gas tank available, that is your number one option. I'll never turn that one down. When moving on, we have everything from fuel cells you have your fuel cell options that if you have an aftermarket gas tank or if you just want to have a fill option that's separate from your existing fill or these guys have a returnless regulator built into it so you can run a single line forward. But then if you have a really unique application, something where you can't find EFI gas tanks, you can't get a pump module inside of it, that's where we came out with the force fuel line. The force fuel line acts exactly like an in-tank fuel pump setup because they act like a small little gas tank with a pump inside. All you need to do is use a fuel pump to send fuel to them, whether it's a mechanical pump or a small electric pump or I mean even an EFI pump for that matter, but you're just transferring fuel over to the force fuel. Once it's full, you return fuel back to the main tank and you use the pump inside of this module to boost the fuel pressure up. So that's kind of the way that the systems work. The ways that I would kind of look at it is try to get the in-tank fuel pump from the get-go. It's your number one most reliable option. They're the quietest. Um, these fuel pumps, they live in fuel. They're designed to push fuel. They do not pull, so that's the best option. This is our frame rail fuel delivery system. This is a good option if you're just trying to jump into an EFI system on the cheap. It comes with 40 feet of fuel line. You got your fuel pump. We give you filters and fittings to, to put everything together. When it comes to an inline fuel pump, I have mentioned that electric pumps are designed to push fuel, not pull. So it is really important to get these mounted really low underneath the vehicle, ideally below the gas tank because you want to create a gravity feed to them. And if the pickup is in your gas tanks at the bottom, uh, you want to make sure that the pump's lower than that. Now, along with that, since these pumps are exposed to the elements, they can get hotter and you are going to hear them because they are external to the fuel. So expect a little bit of noise from a frame rail mounted fuel pump, but mounting them in the rubber clamp will help with that. And then making them as close to the gas tank and as low as possible helps as well too. Because if they can get a good gravity supply of fuel, they're going to operate much more efficiently and they're not going to make as much noise. All of our fuel delivery systems are rated at different fuel flow rates. That flow rate will affect the horsepower limit of the system. So if you're doing an entry level um, up to 400 horsepower like the Go Street system, you pretty much can't go wrong with any application that you have. Our smallest fuel pump here, the in-tank fuel pump, which is also the same inside the Force Fuel Mini, is a 255 liter per hour pump. That'll support about 600 horsepower. And then we go up to a 340 liter per hour pump and a 440 liter per hour pump. The 340 liter per hour pump is in most of our applications. The force fuels have them, our in-tank modules have them, and our returnless fuel cell and our double pump systems have them. 
With the systems, we try to make them as complete as possible. In your small force fuel applications, we supply complete hose, gauge, fittings, even a nice little return bung that allows you to tap back into the gas tank. When you start moving to higher applications or custom application kind of stuff like the double pump force fuel or the double pump in-tank module, these don't come with hardware or fuel lines and that's just because there's two fuel pumps. Uh, it's for high horsepower applications. Usually you're doing something custom with that or we have some people doing check valves and doing redundant so they could switch between the pumps. So we allow the customer to build their fuel delivery fuel lines off of those. But when you're selecting one of the systems, the biggest thing to kind of look at is what's available. So our in-tank fuel pump modules, we have a regulated version. This module allows for adjustments from about six and a half inches down to about 15 inches in tank depth. So when selecting this module, make sure that your tank is deep enough to fit the tank. Being returnless, our regulators built in can only flow up to 340 liters per hour. So we offer it in the 255 liter per hour fuel pump or the 340 liter per hour fuel pump. Now if you move on to the return type, because we don't have the regulator into it, we can shorten the height a little bit more and we can get down to just under six inches down to 15 inches. And because there's no flow restriction off of a regulator, we can do the 255, the 340, and even a 440 liter per hour pump in the intake modules. This guy right here will do up to a thousand horsepower. So if you're trying to do something compact, small, but want to have a lot of horsepower, involved on your uh, vehicle application, that may be the pump to go with. Now if you're going higher, but you want to keep the pump in the gas tank, we have the double pump module. Now this is designed to fit the, the uh, 12 volt fuel cell flange, but with the system, uh, we give a thick foam crush ring, so you can mount this module to any gas tank, even a corrugated gas tank. So the module, can adjust down to about seven inches, down to about 15. There's two pumps. Um, when running a dual pump setup, you can run the pumps independently, or you can plumb them together and then go to um, your pump one, pump two. You can wire them together into a single line to run them up to the front of the vehicle. And the same kind of applies with the double pump force fuel, where there's two pumps. You can power them independently or wind them together for maximum flow. These have 340 liter per hour pumps in them, which will support up to 800 horsepower a piece. So that's 1600 horsepower if you pair them together. Now, if we're trying to cater more towards the force fuel system because we don't have an EFI gas tank available for the vehicle, this can include like um, oddball vehicles, um, a lot of uh, station wagons, have uh, gas tanks in the side of the vehicle and not underneath the floor, so it makes putting one of the intake modules not really an option. These pump modules are kind of your next best option because you can keep your fuel delivery the same, then you could pump your fuel using the mechanical pump or a small electric pump up to one of these guys. This one's mounted nice and small and has multiple mounting flanges for the bracket, so you can mount it underneath the car on a frame rail you can mount it on an inner fender or on a, a firewall and you're just pumping fuel into it and then the in-tank pump inside of it will boost the pressure to the fuel injection. That's kind of a breakdown of all of the fuel delivery systems. Again, always try to go to the in-tank fuel pump. The force fuels are a great option around it. And then if you're just trying to get something going, the frame rail mounted pump is, is your third option. I do want to emphasize that the fuel flow rate of the fuel pump is really important to how much horsepower it can support and the fuel delivery to the EFI system. So if you're getting something like the Mean Street 800 horsepower kit, you're not going to want to use the 255 liter per hour pump because it'll only support 600 horsepower. An easy way to kind of gauge what the system can support and can't and may actually help you um, select a system is look at our master kits. We never pair our master kits with an upside down fuel delivery. So a fuel pump that's smaller than the horsepower capacity of the EFI system. We always make sure that it can support the same horsepower or more. 
So if you're uncertain, you can look at our master kits. If it doesn't exist, there's a reason why. I hope that answers all of your questions with the fuel delivery systems and how they match up with our EFI systems. If you have any questions that I've not answered here, please comment them down below. If you're looking for additional information or have suggestions for future topics, please also comment those or visit our website at phytechefi.com and visit that Tech Tuesday. Thank you for tuning in to this week's Tech Tuesday. See you on the next one.